The first fallout was in neighboring pro-German Finland, which now feared a Soviet invasion. So in March 1944, a secret Finnish delegation arrived in Moscow to discuss peace. Stalin's terms were harsh. He demanded the Petsamo region in the far north of Finland, an area rich in nickel, an important ingredient in the manufacture of metal alloys. He also demanded reparations of $600 million. The Finns refused and prepared for a Soviet invasion. But Finland could wait. The Soviet High Command, or Stavka as it was known, had more pressing business further south. The Red Army offensives in the Ukraine in late 1943 had trapped 120,000 German troops in the Crimea. Hitler, as ever, had refused to allow them to withdraw. They now waited helplessly for a Soviet onslaught. In early April, two months after the lifting of the siege on Leningrad, it came. The troops at the 4th Ukrainian front crashed into the Crimea from the north. At the same time, a diversionary attack landed on the eastern end of the peninsula. In less than a day, the Axis troops in the west had given way. They fell back on the port of Sebastopol, and Hitler ordered Fortress Sebastopol to hold out to the last man. They didn't stand a chance. Within two weeks of the siege, German troops were being evacuated by sea. 40,000 men escaped, but some 30,000 defenders were still trapped in the port. They retreated to the beaches south of the city, hoping to be rescued by more German ships. It didn't happen. The evacuation was interrupted by a Soviet artillery bombardment. Three days later, the Germans surrendered. Meanwhile, back in the northwest of the country, the Germans still occupied much of what is Belarus today. But the Red Army had grabbed a vast bulge of land stretching into Poland and Romania. It meant the Germans had to defend a 1,400-mile front. They were hugely overextended. Military logic suggested it was time for the Germans to withdraw to more manageable defensive positions. But Hitler, still obsessed with territorial gain, refused to allow any further retreat. The German military would continue to pay a high price for Hitler's constant meddling and unrealistic ambitions. By the spring of 1944, Hitler's forces were stretched to their limit. All along the Eastern Front, there was a desperate need for reinforcements. The problem for the German high command was where to place the few resources it had to maximum advantage. German intelligence reports suggested the next big Red Army offensive would be into Belarus. 
But Hitler disagreed. He was convinced Stalin would strike south and seize the Romanian oil fields. Both were wrong, at least to begin with. In the early summer, the Red Army Command finally turned its attention to Finland. Russian troops attacked across the Karelian Isthmus. After two days fighting, the Finns were forced to retreat. Slowly, over the next month, the Red Army advanced north into Finland. By August 1944, it was all over, and the Finns sued for peace.